Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing more work on the car. Pretty much coming up in two weeks, I believe the day after Father's Day, there's a big car show in Connecticut. I'm trying to make it there. Um, I have some big things planned for this weekend for this, if everything works out good. And I put the insurance on it. Um, I have to get my truck to pass emissions first. Uh, that's my main goal, besides doing what I'm doing tonight. I'll stop pacing too. Um, and then I want to throw the insurance on this next week, do, or this week actually, the end of it. Do some things this weekend to this, and then take it somewhere for something special. And then, not really special, just uh, burning money. And then, hopefully, we can do some things with it. But, um, I wanted to do the battery relocation, and I bought the kit. Now, I was just seeing the length of this red wire. But here's the red wire, all the way out to the back. Here's the black wire, the ground. Um, I bought a cutoff switch as well to meet NHRA inspections. And then I bought a 150 amp circuit breaker, which I will use. This is the wiring diagram I found offline. Um, for this, I don't, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But the fuse is going to be the circuit breaker. And we should have all we need for this side. And then it recommends using two gauge from here all the way to the alternator. So I was gonna see how much after I ran this side of the car, um, how much of this is left over without cutting it too short or anything like that or not leaving room for the future um, to do that. I also have the pieces in here for the battery that I bought that I may use for different links down here as well to the switch to the battery and whatnot. Uh, but I'm obviously gonna try to use the longer pieces for where I need it the most. And so this is pretty much the plan. So this should already be stock, essentially the sway wire bracket, the ground to the block, and the ground to the firewall. Um, that should already be done. Motor should already be grounded. The solenoid is pretty simple. We're just going to run this to it all the way. Under. Now, I have one already at the car that went bad. The wire is just old. And so I'm going to replace that with this. I bought the P-clips to do that. So it'll start at the solenoid, which is right here under the hood run under the car, away from the exhaust. I'm probably gonna attach it to the subframe. Um, there's already P-clips in there, so I'm gonna try reusing those if they're still good. If not, I won't. And then my relocation, which I have to clean all this off, is going to be here. Um, so that should be plenty to get back there. And then I'm probably gonna mount the switch to the right, right down here in between the license plate. Put the switch there. And then I'll just have to run a wire I'm going to put the circuit breaker under the hood, probably maybe on the firewall. And then from the firewall back, I'll have to get a section of wire. Now, I already have, when I did the 3G alternator to the solenoid, pretty much you disconnect it from the solenoid and just run it to the switch. And essentially, it goes through the switch when the switch is on and just comes all the way back up this wire and charges. Or, I mean, sorry, it comes all the way back up here, this wire, and charges the battery. Versus going to the solenoid from, from the alternator to the solenoid to the battery like it is stock. You're going to go now from the starter right to the switch, then to the battery. And it'll charge the battery. Um, and then when you kill it, it'll kill everything. So this meets NHRA regulations, which I'm not really sure why um, Summit and Jags and all the battery relocation kits only sell you the length of positive and like the five or six feet of negative cable. Um because that won't meet NHRA standard for drag racing. So, and most tracks follow that more often than not. So I don't know why they don't send you that extra to do the alternator, because when you cut the battery, the alternator will still power the car and keep the car running. So that's why you want to tap your alternator into this. So if you watch other people's videos and they're only just cutting the battery, you're not shutting the car down. That's the whole point of this. If the car was to catch on fire or something, um, it cuts the fuel pump, it cuts everything. It cuts all the power to the car in one shot. That way you're not feeding the fire with more fuel or whatever. And you can try to stop it as soon as possible. Um, another thing, I just ordered one today. I believe. Well, I ordered the mount. I have to go to like Walmart or something. Get one. But I ordered a um, fire extinguisher to... Or I ordered a fire extinguisher mount for the roll cage. Which I'm probably going to put somewhere in the back. But in arm's reach. Just to have on hand. I don't know if that's required in HRA. And I have to look that up. Um, it may be for a certain amount of time that you meet, but I mean, I don't even need the cage technically because I'm not meeting any times. Well, I don't even know, but I doubt it with what I am. Um, 
Oh, and another tip of advice real quick while I'm on this rant before we get into the work. My Mustang, since I've got it running, so it's been about a year and a half since I've had it running, um, it always had, like, it would hit 3,000 RPMs, and then, like, it would have bad idle problems, and I thought it was a distributor and, like, the PIP sensor in there. Um, so I replaced the distributor MSD, and then I thought it was a fuel injector because it kept doing it. And so I did the fuel injectors, and that's when I did the trick flow intake because I figured, you know, the intake sitting on the shelf. Mine's just throw the intake throttle body on now. So I'm doing the injectors. So I did all that. And those, excuse me, didn't really help it. I'm not sure if they did. But yesterday, I spent $10 for a can of, um, where is it? Mass airflow cleaner. 10 bucks. And took the mass airflow apart. Took it off of the um, body itself that it's on. I'll show you guys in a sec. Hold on. Took this part out. This is just stock mass airflow for an 89 motor, even though it's an 87 car. Took this out. Took the metal thing out. I stripped one of the screws, but I found one with a thread that matches. They're inverted torques. If these are stock, I will assume they're stock. They suck. Um, but I took it out and cleaned it and it runs unbelievably well i mean i wish i knew this little fix a year and a half ago in the last summer because you'd have to like when you first start it until like the engine warmed up like 10 minutes give or take you'd hit the gas when you first started it and it would just cut itself out it would die cleaning the mass airflow made a huge difference but anyways let's get into the battery um as you can see here's my battery we're going to take this out we're going to take the battery tray out and then we can finally relocate the um overflow to over here get this ugly orange hose out of the way use a smaller section of it and then the solenoid as you right here here's this white cable this was my previous um battery location that doesn't work so we're going to take this there's a p-clip here we're going to take this all out from under the car and get under there and put this red one in okay so since i have a previous one existing it makes it a little easier but here's a couple of the p-clips use 10 millimeter sockets on mine and the, this is the previous one the white cable the guy put these insulators on the hose in certain parts or i mean on the wire right as it goes past the exhaust so we're going to take those two off and put them right back on the new one um it's a good idea why not so running some hose as insulator so when it comes up past the exhaust piping up here and up to the solenoid right here it doesn't get ruined by the heat so i'm going to keep working on that okay so like i said i have the insulators back on it so i'm starting here this one needs to get pushed up a little bit but i'm starting there doing this front end and then every p-clip that comes off on the way back um i'm going to put this the new cable under it now make sure the cable's nice and taut you don't want it to sag anywhere under the car in case it catches anywhere you don't want that to happen so you can see i took my battery tray out and extremely dirty and then these are all my wires for my electric fans and I use speaker wire to extend some of my gauge wires, um, which is completely fine. It just looks hideous. So at some point, I'm going to go and have to now wire tuck these in here. And then this needs some purple power, some simple green, some needs some action. And then this is my negative cable with all my grounds, which I just put in there at the time being, um, which this needs to come out. But I may use this um, in the rear. And that way I can save my six feet of black cable um, for the alternator or because I have to order it online. I went to Home Depot. I went to two auto parts stores today just trying to find two all-wheel gauge cable or all two AWG, American Wire Gauge. Um, I don't know why I said all-wheel. The two gauge wire to go from the alternator back. That's what it recommends. I think that's a little hefty, but I'd rather be safe than sorry because even this the um i believe this is four gauge the battery relocation kit and the other thing is i also <clears throat> forget what i was gonna say forget it i don't remember but yeah shit oh i am going to test this white cable for continuity um and if it has continuity or i'm going to check to see if it got a short along the way if one of the p clips dug into it or something like that or if it got scraped on the ground the car was super low when i got it um and ruined it and it was shorting out the whole time which is very possible 
It could just ground itself to the frame. Um, but I'm going to check, see if it's got a short. And then if not, if I can't find one, I'm going to test for continuity. And then I might just keep clipping off a foot by foot by foot to see where the bat and the wire is. This is just a mite. I'm not sure if I'll do this. Um, and if that's the case and the wire works and it's long enough, then I'll just run that to the alternator and back on the other side. Um, but I'd rather have this brand new wire guaranteed for the battery. And I might just hook it up, just ground it down there tonight and do that and then work on the switch as I get the parts as they come in, if that's the case. So let me try to get this all done, have the battery in the trunk hooked up by tonight and this on the solenoid. And then, yeah. All right. What is up, guys? It's been a while. This is probably going to be in the middle of a video, most likely the battery relocation video, just popping up in the middle of it. It's a few days later. If my teeth are black and there's shit in my teeth, I just ate Oreos, so ignore that. Um, a couple things happened. One big thing is this weekend, I got some weld lights for this bad boy with uh, Mickey Thompson street radials on there. 275 50R15s. I got three and a half inch skinnies up front. <clears throat> These, the backs are just missing. Well, the guy gave me the wrong center caps, so I got to meet back up with him for the rears. <clears throat> um, I had to beat the shit out of the exhaust to fit them and kind of tuck up some of the inner fender a little bit with a hammer. But other than that, they fit great and they run great. I had the car out on the road Saturday, got insurance back on it, it died at the gas station. So that means I have some alternator issues. So, that being said, I haven't filmed at all, which I'm sorry for. Um, that being said, I wired up the alternator to the cutoff switch, which I don't even think I filmed putting the cutoff switch in. But I have the cutoff switch mounted right here. And then um, I just had the battery killing, battery killed on or off for it. And so, went to the gas station just to put gas in it. And... It died at the gas station, so I don't think the alternator is charging the battery. So last night I took the alternator. Now this is a 3G upgrade right here. So I took the alternator to the shop or to O'Reilly's. They tested it. It tested out good. So that means my wiring somewhere was bad. So I just rewired it from here. It's got four gauge. We go through the firewall. On the, I'll show you guys. On the passenger side floor... Because I ran out of wire. Um, down here, I haven't put the kick panel back in yet, but I put my circuit breaker instead of a fuse. And then you can reset it by pushing the button or by whatever. So that's down there. And then that white cable runs along the side, back here, and into the hatch. Which, um, I got the keys in my pocket. Open this up. I just finally replaced the uh, gas shocks in the hatch. Which normally, <coughs> I've just used a vice grip to hold them up. But now, it holds itself up. <coughs> Excuse me. So our white cable comes up through here, around here. And then it goes to our um, cutoff switch. And then our battery's sitting right over there in the battery relocation. Um, and we wired that all up to... This, I printed this out, but you can find this um, on the forums. Stangnet specifically, I believe I use. Um, so here's that. So we did all that. Look it up, Stangnet. If I remember, I'll put the link in the description below of where I found that. It's all over. You can Google images. You can just Google it. It'll show up. So we did that. Um, and then I had some emission stuff to do with my truck. So I was doing that all weekend. Didn't film any of this, but that's where we are now. What we need to do is figure out the alternator issue, see if it's charging and whatnot. I know it's good, but we want to make sure it's charging the battery. Um, and now that I have it all wired up, we want to make sure that works. So I have a timing light, which another issue came. My car is either too far retarded or too far advanced in timing. And the engine, the whole engine just gets super hot because everything's firing at the wrong time. It runs really good though, which is surprising. But I mean, even the cold air intake, the whole engine bay gets super hot. So it's not, it's creating too much combustion or something in the chambers and it makes the exhaust piping real hot which then makes everything else super hot so i'm going to retime it now i borrowed time light from my dad um because the one i bought one used and of course didn't have a bulb in it and i can't find anything to reference the bulb from but that's besides the point so we're going to retime it and then from staying that there's a guy named jay ricker i think his name is uh, very popular on there 
does a lot of great write-ups and reviews. I mean, he's the go-to guy, and you can find most of his reviews on StangNet for all the Fox Body stuff and any issues you're having. Check him out, look him up, <clears throat> and he has a whole checklist of everything. So, like, fuel problem checklist, ignition checklist, you know. So there's a alternator one, not charging checklist. And we're going to go through that with the multimeter, see what we can find out, and that should pinpoint us to where it's bad. Now, I did rewire it, and when I rewired it, I made sure there was continuity through all the wires um, before I put it all together. So, that being said, let's get to work. So, real quick, for those don't, who don't know how to time a car, it's really quite simple. Um, these are your basic time light. This is old Craftsman Sears Roebuck. This plugs into the bottom. Most guns will have it already. And then there's either a clip like this. Or there's a spring thing, which you have to put on the spark plug and then put the uh, spark plug boot over it. This one's nice and easier. It's the better option. And this you can just clip over. You want to do cylinder one, <clears throat> which in the high output 5.0 motor, which is in most Fox, all Fox bodies that are 5.0s, um, it is the first cylinder right up here. So we're going to clip onto this wire. Oh, shit. I'm going to put my positive on the solenoid now that my battery's relocated because that's where it'll get juice from. And then I'll just ground my negative probably to the hood pin if it works or there's a ground here. Um, do that. And then you're going to need a half inch socket. It should need a half inch socket with a wobble or swivel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I do normally do a 12 inch extension just so I don't get interference with the belt or anything. Keep my thing out of there. Just loosen that. Undo your spout. Um, and then you just move the thing based off of that, and you look down here, it's your harmonic balancer, and that's where the light flashes, and yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, if you're doing it for your first time, ask somebody who knows how to do it for help. It makes a big difference. So let's time it. Alright guys, um, I just reset the car to top dead center, retimed it, I believe it's at 12, 13 degrees right now, and it's running alright, it's idling a little high. Um, but my brother's going to swing by tomorrow. We're going to check it out and look into that. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I did check. I am getting 12 volts to the back of the alternator and 12 volts to the system. So the wiring works. Shit. The wiring works good. Kill switch works good. Um, and you guys can see right now the kill switch is off. Where are the keys? In the ignition still, of course. And you turn the keys, nothing. So, and obviously if you were to kill the switch, it would kill the whole car. Um, but yeah, that's about it guys. I'm running around like crazy. I've got a show, biggest, one of the biggest shows in Connecticut, um, coming up. Today is Tuesday, and it is next Monday, so in six days, I think, if that's right. Um, or five days. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Anyway, it's coming up, so I've been really trying to get this done. I got the new tires for it. Um, I've got an alignment appointment at 9 o'clock on Saturday at Firestone to get it aligned. And once I get this timed and good, the battery should be charging now. Um, yeah, so we should hit the show. And everything should be good. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Sorry it was a lot of talking. Stay tuned for more, guys. i still got a lot of stuff to do. Um, still got to find a door. That's my next goal. Is a door panel for that door. And an electric door with a T-top window. I'm still looking for that. But as always, guys, stay tuned for more. Like, comment, subscribe. And thank you for watching.